Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I read something that is somewhat interesting. It shows that there is a chance of Apple returning in some way, shape, or form to caring about the user. Now, as much as I dislike Apple for a number of reasons, there are certain things that they do that I acknowledge just make sense from the standpoint of gaining a user base that is fundamentally devoted to you. Just some basic small touch things that other manufacturers avoid. For instance, in the early days, being one of the first manufacturers to have the balls to say for 99% of our products, we're just not even giving you the option of a hard drive. We're not even giving you a port on the inside of the computer where you could plug in some spinning piece of crap. You're getting an SSD. I know, I know you want more space, but too effing bad. Trust, you know, trust us, you will prefer 64 gigabytes of this to 500 gigabytes of that. And there are other design decisions that they'll make as well, like just something basic like the magnetic charging port. So with your typical de laptop PC, you have a charge port, you have a typical the barrel connector, the plug that plugs into it. If you trip over it, not only does it ruin the port, but typically P most of these PCs are designed where the port is soldered to the motherboard. So not only did you ruin the charger, ruin the port, but you also broke the motherboard with one trip. And Apple had a way around this, which is they had that little magnetic charging port they came out with in 2006. Now, it wasn't until 2009 that the circuitry used in this was any good, in my opinion. There, it was much more complex in the older versions when the one-wire circuit was much more complicated. And, man, I, I printed so much money replacing Q6910s, Q6915s, and U6915s in the olden days. Those were... Those are the good days when you could just like make money for do, do, do. Back before it was all missing PM sleep, S4L and whatnot. If I were printing money any faster, you'd call me Jerome Powell. But the idea was a good idea. And the way they implemented it after 2008 was actually good for the 2009 through 2016. It was a really nice idea. And because at some point, at a certain point after Steve Jobs' death, they just stopped caring whatsoever about the user experience of their products, they took this away and to adopt USB-C. So instead of having USB-C for a charge port, as well as a magnetic charge port, they just went all USB-C. And with the A1708 model that was released in, without the touch bar in 2016, they went even stupider with it. And instead of just having a USB-C charge port that then connects to the motherboard on a flex cable, they had the USB-C charge port that was soldered to the board. So if you tripped over the charge port, you just destroyed your motherboard. And those are actually considerably more difficult connectors to replace than your average DC and jack on your PC motherboard. Your average DC and jack on a PC motherboard is two or three solder points. That one has... Um, more. It's USB-C, and the pins are really, really short. They don't actually make their way to the other end. So if you have a through-hole soldering iron, and you're and then it has a larger tip, and you're not used to that type of stuff, it's really easy to get a half connection. It's it it sucks. And one of the things that I like here is that Apple is seems to be bringing back the MagSafe. So the true hero of this article, as with most articles you'll read in Bloomberg or the New York Times or the Information, is a person with knowledge of the plans and return of its magnetic charger, according to a person with knowledge of the plans, our hero. It says the new laptops are planned to come in two screen sizes, blah, 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 and there's not really much information in this article besides the fact that they are returning the MagSafe charger, which honestly I think makes a lot of sense. There's really no reason to move away from what differentiates yourself from every other company. There's no reason to move away from the reasons that people like you. It, it doesn't make sense to me whatsoever that they remove this. It seems, in my opinion, to just have been sheer laziness or desire to get a product out the door really quickly. And, well, we already have USB-C in there. Do we really need to spend extra money or time on the magnetic charging thing? In my opinion, you do because that was one of the, the draws to the device. Now, I don't think that there's an Apple user out there that's going to say... Well, the new machine doesn't have magnetic charging, so I guess I'm going to migrate to Windows and deal with viruses again and, you know, deal with uh, all the crap that I dealt with in Windows XP and Vista that caused me to switch to Mac to begin with. I don't think that it's that bad. But the problem is, as you continuously pick away at the reasons that made people go to Mac, over time, eventually that inertia will get broken and people will, will go back to using Windows-based hardware. And I, I think it's kind of stupid to get rid of the, the things that made your products better in a in a really good way. So I think it makes sense that they're going back to the magnetic charging port here. The other thing it mentions in the article is that they're actually going for better displays with higher contrast panels than before. 
honestly, even if they had the panels they did before, I think most people would be happy. This is not, you know, this isn't the olden days where the, the, the screens that went into a lot of the MacBooks sucked. Nowadays, this is another thing that most Windows-based uh, PC manufacturers get wrong. They think that it's okay to sell a computer for $1,600, pay all the attention in the world to the CPU and the RAM, still include a fucking spinning hard drive, but above all, use the same screen that you'll find in a $400 piece of shit Acer that's on sale at Walmart. And this is really stupid for, for a number of reasons. The first is that it doesn't it help you differentiate your product from the cheap one because the first thing that people see is the screen. You know, for your average user, they're not going to see the the megahertz of the processor. They're not going to see a lot of the stuff in the graphics card. The first thing that your average per Joe sees is the screen quality. So if you want to attract the average everyday person, you're going to want to put a good screen in there. The second reason this is dumb is because it also tosses away the professionals. So I know someone who's kind of getting into professional design, and she was saying, I... I would like the ability to use another machine. It's virtually impossible for me to find a laptop that has a halfway decent screen. And I remember bringing up, well, what about this Dell IP XPS one? And she actually bought it, and she showed it to me side by side with a MacBook, and I fucking hung my head in shit. It was, it was horrible. And again, I know you're not supposed to take a picture of a screen next to another screen. It looks, this, it looks equally bad in person. But one of the things I've noticed over the years is that Apple went from giving you a garbage screen with the computer. The LP133WX1 TLA1 that was in the $1,100 A1181 MacBook was shit. They went from giving you a shitty screen in the computer, like every other PC manufacturer, to putting a good one in. Whereas a lot of PC manufacturers, whether it's Lenovo, Toshiba, Asus, Acer, HP, went from putting a shitty one in to either putting a slightly less shit one in or putting a mediocre one in. And even when you are willing to pay for a better screen... Often you get a screen with better resolution, but you don't get something with the, I don't know, you know, as good contrast or wider color gamut. I am not a display person. I'm not an expert when it comes to displays, but I know what looks good and I know what looks like shit. And one of the things that I can say is that when I see a modern MacBook next to a modern PC laptop, even if the PC laptop costs twice as much as the MacBook, the screen in it is often a steaming pile of shit. And this is something that particularly bothered me when I bought my last two ThinkPads. I got the P50, it was about $1,400, and the 1080p screen that came with it is a really shitty looking washed out screen, and the T440 that I got, that one was about $900 in the 950, 900 area, and that machine came with a 1366 by 768 screen that was so washed out, I actually ordered a new panel the same week before I even started using the laptop, because simply reading articles on it hurt my eyes. It wasn't a question of just the resolution. It was just how washed out and bad that panel looked. It hurt to just ba read basic articles on it, even if I turned the brightness down. And there's really no reason for this to be the case. And it drives me nuts that of all the PC manufacturers out there, none of them are really able to figure out what it is that draws people to Apple's products. Microsoft with their own operating system really doesn't seem to understand what it is that draws people to Apple's products. And this is a really easy market to take because you have a company that releases products that break on a regular basis, treats them like crap when they do break, Sometimes they'll openly admit, oh, yeah, yeah, we designed that, that year's model with a bad keyboard. Yeah, we're still using that model in this one. What? What, bitch? You're going to buy it anyway. I mean, they, they do that with their uh, butterfly keyboard replacement program. I think they announced that program in, like, 2018 or 2019. They were still making those computers after announcing that they come with defective keyboards. Point is, it should be easy to take this market, but what I notice is that so many PC manufacturers out there don't even appear to really ask their customer base, what would you like? Or they don't ask the customers of their competitors, hey, what made you choose that over ours? They just don't seem to care. They'll, and the thing that I find interesting is that there are so many different companies out there where they'll have five or 10 or 13 different lines of machine. And it doesn't matter which of those 13 different lines of computers, which all have five or six different models within the 13 different lines you choose at any price point. It could be said, argued today, that most of those machines will not have as good as a screen that you get when you buy a MacBook just with its stock screen. And that's, 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 that's sad. That's, that's really sad. And I hope that PC manufacturers start to improve on this. But this is showing that uh, you know, Apple's open to admitting when they made a mistake. 
they realized that removing MagSafe was a bad thing to do because this differentiated our product from all those other schmucks that haven't caught on 20 years later or 15 years later. And they're, oh, and they're continuing to capitalize on what makes the product good and what differentiates it, which again is the fact that the screen in the product is not a steaming pile of shit. And I wish more PC manufacturers would do this, but most of them don't because they, they suck. And the thing that I... I Again, like the MagSafe stuff, that's just basic, simple stuff. Like, I mean, when I buy a PC laptop nowadays, one of the things that will just immediately cause me to rule it out, do you have the charge port soldered to the motherboard? Because that's just, if I'm traveling, if I'm doing right to repair stuff and I'm traveling, I, I don't carry a soldering iron with me. And frankly, that's just not something that I accept being a, a failure point in 2020. So even my ThinkPad, this does uh, a plug that you you, you plug in, you uh, has a jack that you know, you plug the plug into it. It's not magnetic in sense. So it's still, if I trip over it, I could potentially break it. But you don't break the motherboard when you do this because the jack itself is separate from the board. So instead of having the jack soldered onto the board, which in my opinion is a horrible, dumbass design, you have the board has a connector on it. That connector goes to a cable. That cable then goes to a jack that is in this little compartment where it can wiggle around a little bit and it has some give so that if I yank the cord out of it really hard, I'm not breaking the plug uh, off of the motherboard. I'm just wiggling the plug around in this little thing. And the cable that actually then goes and gets uh, goes to the motherboard is not going to yank on it, is not going to destroy any solder joints or anything. I try to avoid buying products that are so horribly designed that the charge port is actually soldered to the motherboard when I can avoid it. Because this, this is something that Lenovo figured out a really long time ago. This is something that Apple figured out a really long time ago and for some stupid reason forgot about it in 2016, but now remembered. And I hope more manufacturers into the future do this. Like when I look at a Dell or an HP laptop that's in the $1,000 range and I see that the charge port is directly soldered to the motherboard, I just want to cry because you, you're, you're you're putting an expiration date on the product at that point. It's not like a computer monitor. It's not like a stereo system or something where you plug it in and that, that's probably going to get plugged until you move or, uh, or get evicted from your place. That's going to stay there. So taking this one step shows that there is someone, there is someone working at Apple that is trying to remind them that they should care to some extent about the user experience. Hey, you know, we probably shouldn't sell a phone for $1,000 and a computer for $3,000 that when you purchase these, these items from us for $4,000, this one can't plug into this one without a dongle. Hey, you know how we had this feature that no other company had where if you're walking and you accidentally trip over your charger, it doesn't make your computer go flying? Yeah, why do we get rid of that? Can we put that back in there? You know, there's someone there. There's someone there with common sense, and the common sense is getting through. Now, what about right to repair, man? <laughs> How about some right to repair? I don't know. A man can dream, can he? That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Actually, you know what? Don't. Don't let me know what you think in the comments down below. Go to library and let me know what you think in the comments there. If you know how to use Google, you know how to find me on library. I've given the link hundreds of thousands of times in the comments at this point. Many complain about the ads on YouTube. I don't set the placement of the ads. YouTube does. And one of the things I've thought about this is as they have decided to keep shoving mid... They, they, I can put up a 30-minute video and they'll have eight or nine ads in it. It's insane. One of the things I've decided to do is not remove them. I'm going to keep them all there. I'm not going to remove them when YouTube does that. If YouTube wants to piss off my viewers so much that they make another platform popular, so be it. Why not? If you want to see my videos ad-free, the exact same content that you get here on YouTube, check out Library. Just saying. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.